Okay, there's still some people trickling in, it looks like, uh, but I think we can go ahead and get started. I want to welcome everyone to another recording this week. Uh, my name is Zach Olson. I'm with the education team at the Iowa Center. One quick note, we are recording this session for all participants. Uh, in case, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone who couldn't make it can listen to it on our website later, or if you have uh, any, if you did attend and you have any follow-up questions, you can listen to it again. Um, obviously, we're all in very uncertain times at the moment in terms of health legislation and communication, and <clears throat> our primary concern at this point is to be an all-inclusive resource for all of our small business owners throughout the state of Iowa. So you've heard the spiel. If you've been on a webinar so far, you've heard it several times now, but I will continue. We have a COVID-19 resource page on our website, so please check that out. It's pretty comprehensive. Um, we have an Instagram handle at the Iowa Center that is constantly updating with additional resources, education opportunities, uh, sharing stories of local small business owners around the state. And we have a Facebook group called Iowa Small Business Resources and Support that has been a really, that has proven to be a really wonderful place for uh, local community members to get together and discuss issues that they're seeing, uh, ask questions for each other and to us, and, and a, a great place for us to point people in the right direction, regardless of what resources they may need. Um, as I said, our, our main priority at the moment is to make sure that all members of our community are heard and helped, and I think hearing from the community, those questions and issues help us make sure that everyone gets the resources that they need in this time. So um, one, more ish, or one more thing on the Zoom recording. If you have any questions, if you hover over the bottom of your window here, there's a Q&A and a chat function. Please do utilize those as much as, as you'd like to. We, are, we would very much like to have as many questions as we can get. Um, if you have a, a little more extensive question that you don't really want to type out, just put something in the chat or the Q&A to let me know that <clears throat> you'd like me to unmute your mic so that we can have a little more expansive conversation. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Phillips. He is the Vice President of Treasury Management Services at Iowa Bank. He's going to be talking about navigating small business financials during COVID-19. Mark? Thank you very much, and thanks for uh, to you uh, and the center for having me this morning. Um, really, you know, there's a lot of people that are in the banking and financial industry, and uh, just honored that you guys reach out to me. Um, I'd also like to just thank you. I, I see there's uh, eight participants on the call, and for whoever listens to this, if you're a small business, um, thank you. Thanks for. Um, Thanks for thanks for making the risk and taking the risk and being a small business. Not necessarily right now, but whenever you made that leap. Um, I, I'm not a small business owner. Uh, I'm, I work at a bank. Um, have I started a nonprofit? Yes. Um, but starting a nonprofit is, is still a little bit different than, than starting a business. And so I just, um, right now, I, I say thank you to you. Um, how this is going to work today is... Uh, I've got about seven or eight bullets that I'm going to go through. Um, <clears throat> I, I tend to probably do better in a in-person meeting. And so, uh, this is practice. This is practice for, could I do a podcast or do I have a, a voice for radio? And so, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a bullet. Uh, I will, I will pause at the end of that so you can type or ask a question, um, just so that we can try to make this as interactive throughout our time. Um, again, because it's, um, I think we're all getting used to how does a Zoom um, or a meetings to go or whatever type of video conferencing works. Um, so before we jump into the, the serious stuff, I'm, I'm going to give you something to think about, which is what's good today. Um, so on your pen, pad, whatever, or if you want to put it in the, in the chat pieces, what's good today? Think about what's, what's good today. I get this question from a gentleman in Kansas City, Fundamism Paul. Uh, so if you're into the Twitter world, if you Google at fun, duh, so F-U-N-D-A, 
M-I-S-M-P-A-U-L, Paul, um, kind of has a, um, a, a beat to his, himself of, of, of what's good today. Um, we had, the bank had a, just an all-employee seminar uh, on uh, President's Day in February where we, where we gathered all of our employees in one space, and, and he was our keynote speaker. And he just has been keeping, what I would say, a good rhythm uh, and has some good thoughts to, to probably help navigate ourselves to what's good today as opposed to always staying on what's the negative piece. So that was my first bullet. Uh, second bullet is really has nothing related to, to financing, but it's everything with what's happening is be patient. Um, right now, over the last two or three weeks, we've had information thrown at us at, our, at a rate that was that is so fast. Um, you know, calls were released on on Tuesday afternoon about different loan programs and you couldn't access it. Um, email emails have been inundated with this is the new program. Um, financial websites, uh, if you go to their websites, they've got a response to COVID and everyone's trying to access to understand what can I do and lines are busy. Uh, we have had that same thing. And the reason why I say uh, be patient is that um, everyone's trying to do the same thing. And, and it takes, takes time. Uh, it takes time for us to, to understand what each package or loan option out there is available. Uh, so for example, the stimulus bill sounds like it'll get signed today. It will then be publicized for all of us to read. Um, I have a friend of mine that works at the Moy Partnership. She printed off the first version because she had access to it uh, last Saturday, and it was, oh, you know, envision your coffee cup and probably half, uh, I think it was around 800 pages is what I saw, or eight, just over, you know, half of a coffee cup tall. And so she started looking at that last Saturday. And so I'm trying to use her as a uh, avenue to understand what's all in that. But that's going to take time. Um, I think even us as, as, as bankers, or I think about just the, the folks that are on this call uh, or listening to this as a, a, a recording, none of us have been in this situation. You know, I, I look back to the 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11 period that was pre and then leading up to the housing uh, crash. Um, Twitter, Twitter didn't exist. And, and the reason why I bring this up is that, that information wasn't flying at one second five seconds all of the time. And so we now have the ability for better, or for worse, that it flies off, off the handle. And, and we've got information that's on one end of the spectrum and information on the other end of the spectrum. And so um, I just say that because uh, it, it is a new period of time um, and we're trying to get information uh, to you, to our customers and make sure it's the right information uh, all the time. So with that, be patient. I'll kind of pause if anybody has any questions to that. Maybe not. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right. Um, next is connect with your banker. Um, the same lines of be patient. Um, I would say in these are the times that you want to be in connection with your banker if you haven't already. When I talk to our lenders throughout our, our footprint, we have 26 locations in Iowa, so we have people in rural and in urban areas. Um, if you haven't heard from your banker yet today, um, one, I would encourage you to reach out to them. Uh, two, if you haven't heard from them, maybe just pause and reflect, why haven't I? And, and is now maybe a good time to understand, is this the right relationship for me? Um, because when I talk with my lenders, um, they've, they've been calling, engaged with customers uh, about the first week of March, not necessarily on a daily basis, but weekly uh, to understand what their needs are, what, what trajectory, if, 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 you know, the closures of a company, because uh, they have to, like a restaurant, uh, what impact is that going to have on them and how can we respond? Um, and the reason why I say that is us as a bank, we have been discussing what can we do for customers. And so our lenders are doing one-on-one -on -one conversations with what can we do for them? What can't we do? How do we help them in a loan situation? 
Um, and then from there, we're assessing what can we do with each individual customer. It's not a template. It's not one size fits all. It's, it really is a conversation. Um, it's being patient in the process because, again, a lot of things are changing for that customer. And how can we, how can we help that? Uh, one of the questions that I see, just because I kind of want to keep this uh, engaging, is it says uh, from Megan, what happens if I don't pay my bank loan for three months? Would you rather I pay what I can or nothing at all? Uh, very fair question. Those are the types of conversations that we're having with our customers. So we're looking at, um, we would, we're, we're going we're gonna to address, again, each situation is different. So that's why I'm saying, if you haven't connected with your banker, please do, because uh, you need to be proactive. Because um, then the next step is, what happens if I don't pay my bank for three months? Uh, you should be in conversation with your bank already to say, can I do this? Can I move to uh, interest only for three months? Or just understand what are my options? Because some banks uh, maybe have been proactive and, and have given guidance to their lenders of all of the options, right? So um, that I would encourage you to, to look at. Um, are there laws to protect me or laws to protect you, the bank? I don't know that answer um, as far as laws uh, because what you've signed, so here's what I tell you. I'd go back to your loan agreement and, and read the fine print on what happens if I don't pay. So start with what you know today, which is what does my loan agreement say? What's my prepayment penalties? Uh, is there a personal guarantee attached to this and what does that mean? Okay. We learned that where a lot of customers learn what a personal guarantee is in 2009, 10, 11. Personal guarantee is, is if you default on a loan, you're personally guaranteeing this. So what other reforms of payment will the bank be asking for? So one, identify what your loan agreements say. What are the covenants? Okay? Um, as far as, again, the, the reason I'm going back to this, are there laws to protect me or laws to protect you, the bank? I, I just don't know what that what that would be specific because this is, um, if I were to look at, is there a, uh, a natural disaster or pandemic writing within that agreement? I'm going to lean on no. So I, I just would need to, to dive into to a loan, loan agreement. Um, and if you want me uh, or, or another banker to read your loan agreement to help you sit down and understand it, do a, a, a Zoom meeting and share the screen and look at the agreement. Uh, that, that's an easy way to understand what, what, what all – what do I have today? What do I need to move to? Um, so just to kind of review options, what happens if I don't pay my bank for three months? Um, I, I think that, again, that's a conversation you have with your bank. They'll, they'll explain to you what happens. Um, this is a unique time. Uh, last, three weeks ago, I was sitting around a table and it was people in different generations. And um, two of the people uh, at the table were in the workforce when the 2008, 9, and 10 crash happened, okay? The other three were all in college. Look back at 9-11, there was only two of us that were in the workforce. The others were in junior high and college, high school. So when you think about this event, um, some people didn't even, weren't even in the workforce for the 2009, 10, 11. So this is their first, like, extreme economic situation. And so... All of us, uh, we just, we're, we're unsure we, it's new territory. Um, so paying that back for three months can be a variety of options. Uh, would you rather I pay what I can or nothing at all? Um, I think you just have to look at how much cash do you have on hand. Have you gone down the, the items? So I'll kind of uh, connect with your banker. The next bullet that I'm moving to is cash is king, and this will kind of move into it. It's also queen. Uh, forget it. Uh, my comment here is really it's the entire deck. Uh, you've maybe heard that before. Uh, so this bullet is really preserved cash. Uh, what does that look like? Prioritize payments. So again, sit down with your banker or even prior to calling your banker, think about what needs to be paid first and then last. Um, call vendors, ask for extensions on repayment. Um, you know, Everyone along that chain is, is pr probably, or I hope they're doing the same process. So, so when you go and call for, you know, pushing a payment, pausing on a payment, 
it, you know, everyone along that chain is in that conversation, or at least I hope they are or in that thought process. And so when you get to that with your banker of, would you rather I pay what I can or nothing at all? It's more of, well, let's, let's look at what are your payments? Um, you know, I know, um, um, you have a, have a dentist that, um, and a lot of a friend of mine is, is a dentist and they've, they've closed their office, right? Um, everyone's on unemployment. Um, and, and so he hasn't had to buy any surgical items, right? And so from a, from a cost perspective, his expenses, he doesn't have a lot, but he still has a, a loan on the building. So, um, you know, it's that type of walking through the process of, okay, I don't have employee costs and, and item costs, but I still have a loan on my, on my mortgage. How much can I pay or what can I pay and walk through that? Right. And so that's where back to that calling your banker to actually walk through step by step. Um, because the last thing is, is you want to communicate to your banker of I'll call them last uh, because I, I just can't do, can't figure out. Well, they, they probably will engage you. And I know we are uh, our customers on, on what's that form of payment. So I'm going to kind of pause because I moved, I kind of mush connect with your baker and cash is king together while answering these questions. So I'll pause before I move to the next board. All right, uh, next bullet is call your clients. Um, you know, when you think about calling your clients, whether you're, you know, in the food service or if you're a CPA or um, you're like, well, well, why, what would that do? How would I do that? Is it really beneficial? Uh, we've, we've been really pressing on our bankers to call our customers to really to be in front of them. Um, ask them how they're doing. It's not a has nothing to do with selling anything. It's, it's, it's really just a connection. Um, you know, I think about all of my meetings that I've had to move to zoom and, and something like this is it, it's, it's not face to face. It's uh, meetings like this are really clunky. You have to let someone talk and then pause and then someone talks. Um, and so it makes it challenging to really build a relationship with people. And so now when I say call your clients, um, really think about, um, calling and just ask them how, how are you doing and so kind of back to your banker uh, as we call customers we're asking just how are they doing uh, it's not a it's not a customer it's not a call to say we need to sell you something or set up a new thing it's more just how are they doing um, call your business partners maybe call uh, call other customers that are in the same industry um, or call a customer that's a larger customer than you right uh, not customer but a larger business than you and, and ask them what they're doing um, you know, I, I have engaged into a couple other bankers to understand what are they doing, what are they not doing, um, you know, not to, not to be doing the same thing, but just understand how, how things are, are going throughout our industry. Um, uh, and then the last is just the, the ever so easy question of just what can you help with? Um, that, that you never know what you're going to find out if you don't ask that. Uh, I see Megan's got a question up here. Thanks, Megan. Along the lines of cash is king, many clients are short on Short on it, interest rates are so low. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kind of look at the last ones. And for those of you, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the chat panel. Um, if you put your cursor in your Zoom uh, screen and go down the bottom, and it, it's got a little chat icon. If you click that, it'll open up on the right side. Or at least on mine, it's the right side, and then you can see these questions being posted. Uh, and you can post your own questions at the bottom of that. Uh, question here is, is you know, um, if I'm short on cash, cash, interest rates are low, um, and interest rates are low here, uh, connecting back to home mortgage. Uh, I've heard clients lucky to own a house have asked, should I refinance my house and take the equity out as cash? either to invest, pay off debt, or just increase my emergency fund, or leave the equity, can I use the cash in my home to help business so it doesn't fold? Um, 
I would say all of those options are on the table and yes, it is the very short answer, the long answer. Um, and we'll kind of take them step by step here. Home mortgage rates, um, you know, I, I believe it was March, um, the last week of February and then leading into about like Monday, March 2nd or so. Uh, the reason why I say that is I myself was trying to figure out when to refi. And, um, you know, refi uh, home mortgage rates don't track with, with the market. So just to kind of give you context, they've, um, home mortgage rates have rocketed all the way from they were at 2.875 for a 30 year a couple weeks ago was the low uh, to just earlier this week, they were up at 3.6 for uh, a refi of 30. So they have rocketed up and down. Um, you can always, a couple things. Call your current home mortgage provider. You can do a no cost refi with a lot of them, right? Um, so ask how you can do that. So that's a, a no cost refi. You can always lock in a rate. You can lock in today um, and, and, and maybe take advantage um, of what that period of time is. So you, so you don't necessarily complete the transaction right away. You maybe look and buy time for home mortgage rates to fluctuate. Um, and then a couple of these others, uh, should I take cash out? Um, I think everybody's budget is different. Uh, so we'll just we'll kind of stick on our personal budget. If you can take cash out and you can be disciplined to not take any money out of that and you can make your, your new payment with cash out and have a you know emergency fund now with that equity, do it. Um, I think it's a good option. It's it's highly available, and and then if you don't need it, uh, and or you go to sell the house, you just pay that towards the principal of your house to pay it down, right? So in essence, you're not you're not losing anything, right? And you're not paying more um, because the interest rates have have come down quite a bit, um, and you have this emergency fund to use. So uh, I I think it's a a, a very viable option. Um, and I am even myself personally trending towards that option as well, just to uh, take advantage of that at this time. Um, can I leave the equity in my house uh, to help my business so it doesn't fold? Um, for the question on the chat. Um, yeah, I think this is where that conversation with your banker of, is going to go down that the, the lines of if the conversation starts with, hey, I laid people off, I'm, I'm closed. I have no revenue coming in or I've had no revenue coming in for a period of time in March. And I've got my, my payments coming due that I have to pay or that I'm obligated is a commercial real estate or my rent. Uh, maybe I've got a home payment. Uh, maybe I've got a car payment. Um, taxes are due March 31st. Um, I think you're going to look through all of those, right? And what, I'm going to tell you is is then the, between you and your banker, you're going to you're going to navigate. Okay, well, what what's the most important? What can we look at to find equity? And sometimes home is a great place. You can either cash it out, or you can just basically put, you know, a second. You can put a second lien on your house, um, and we'll use that as equity. Uh, once you don't need it, then the bank can take it off. Um, so again, it's about being flexible. Uh, the banker needs to understand every, every situation is different. Um, but, but I would say, you know, use, um, use your home. It has, it probably has equity. There's value in that. Um, uh, and it, it's a good, it's a good tool to use a vehicle to use on your balance sheet to, to help you through this period of time. Uh, I'm going to kind of pause right there, uh, before I jump into the next bullet. I'm going to jump in quick, Mark, if you don't mind. Just a reminder to everybody, uh, if you joined late, please, any questions you have, utilize the chat function and the Q&A functions at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, we're really excited to field all of those questions and give you the, the, the information that you need. All right, thank you. Uh, next one, uh, equip to move to a cashless, and cashless environment. Um, is your business using services to collect or disperse money electronically? Question mark. 
Are you using online banking for reports and statements to manage cash flow and reporting? Question. Um, it was probably a week and a half ago, uh, sitting at church, and um, a friend of mine said, hey, have you heard that, you know, maybe some of this is uh, being passed through cash. Um, by the way, cash is always physically, it's dirty. Like, there's just a lot of junk on that ca on cash. And I hadn't really thought about that. And so over the last week and a half, I've spent a decent amount of time making sure that we're educating our internal employees and then uh, to our customers on, on what are you doing to take, take advantage of or, or moving or using services such as, um, you know, I'll kind of walk through that re if you've been a cash-based business, uh, meaning physical cash, how can you move to, to what happens if I can't take cash or I'm not going to take cash? And so here are some of those examples, right? So when I say cashless, uh, one way to do cashless, right, is make sure you have a merchant processing. Merchant processing is, is you know, can be referenced to that, to a little reader that might attach to your phone uh, or the actual item that sits on your, on your checkout uh, and you run a credit card to collect payment, right? Or you do it on your, on your website or on the phone. So, I would, you know, now's always a good time to look at relationships. And so maybe update that contract with whoever your merchant processor is to maybe, uh, maybe reduce less fees if that's going to be a way you're going to direct people for payment. Okay. Um, next would be uh, ACH, automated clearinghouse, uh, which is a way to either send or receive money. So again, um, this, the, the easiest example is payroll, right? A lot of people, Maybe they've been dragging their feet and haven't done payroll. And we've just been issuing checks. Well, um, if people are concerned with physically being less than six feet from each other, and then you're going to now hand them a check that you've touched, then you're going to take that check and then go to the bank. Um, by implementing ACH services to do payroll, uh, you can automatically or direct deposit people's payroll. Um, I understand there's a, there's a variety of reasons why people don't do direct deposit, uh, but it's one of those things that you have to start thinking about. Uh, how do I pay staff if we're physically not there, right? Or how do I send payment? Uh, from another perspective, ACH can also collect, right? So uh, I was talking with the church last week in a small rural community, and they are um, uh, they haven't been meeting and they don't have people set up to collect their tithe. So people have been writing a check or putting cash in. And he's like, we're not positioned to, to do these payments. So they're thinking about how do we do ACH collection? So again, um, the ACH option isn't just to send money for payroll or send vendor or bill payments right, to your uh, vendors. It's also a way to collect. So by looking at, at doing, uh, how should I say this? By looking at ways you're taking a check or a cash is how do I move to a way that is, is reducing the process? You know, um, bill pay is out there. Bill pay is a product that was really intended for consumers. So retail, people like your, yourself individually. Um, depending upon what your, what your service is like with your bank, it may still physically send a check. And so you, that bill pay isn't, isn't really a good option. ACH is the best option for businesses. Um, again, does it have costs that a, a bank can charge and does charge? Yes. Uh, but a lot of times it's competitive. Uh, for example, like I know QuickBooks, if, if you set up an ACH module, um, you know, it's actually can be more cost prohibitive to do it with QuickBooks than, than maybe connect to the bank. And so this goes back to, you know, talking with a banker, understanding what are my options and then saying, can you help me out with, from a cost perspective um, to, to be able to implement this? Uh, for example, us at, as, as Bank Iowa, we would help with training, over the phone training, uh, help you send your first file. Um, it's a safe and secure process uh, and it's pretty simple to, to do it. Uh, so, so for example, on payroll, uh, what you'd do is you'd, you'd ask uh, for individuals, uh, their name, their account number, their routing number, um, and, and that's what you'd need. Same thing on a vendor payment. Um, if you look at an invoice or if you call the customer, uh, you know, now is probably one of those times where you're like, yeah, sure. Uh, 
we'd, we'd love to accept an electronic payment so we don't have to process a check because there might not be anybody in the office. Um, so I think when I, when I think about equipped to move to a cash environment, it's not just a benefit for the customer or to ease efficiencies or increase and be more efficient. It's, it's everything from issuing to then the receiving person because there may not be someone in the office to process that payment. Um, so I think customers really need to think about how do we move to a cashless environment. Um, and then the other thing is just, you know, talking with your banker, um, saying, how am I, am I using all the services that you have? Uh, online banking, how am I using it? Ask him for a tutorial, share a screen with them, uh, sit down with them, show them what you're doing. Um, so they can help you and say, no, nope, do it this way. Pull the report this way, search for this function. Like, this is a great time to walk through and learn more about what services they have. Because again, if the banker's engaging with you right, it shouldn't be from a selling point. It should be from a consulting point just so that you can stay open. Okay. Um, and that's going to, going to help you at the, at the end of the day. I'll pause there of uh, uh, equipped uh, to move to a cash environment before the next, next bullet. All right, uh, ne next bullets are gonna kind of merge together. Uh, over the last uh, you know, two weeks, uh, many employees uh, have, have, and companies have moved to VPN, working from home, uh, using your own um, server, right, or network. So the increase of security, uh, cybersecurity, is, has gone through the roof. Uh, people are getting attacked. Um, you know, the story I use is always giving one of my, my uh, bankers a hard time saying, Hey, if you're living, uh, you know, in a basement and it's somebody else's Wi-Fi, uh, you have no idea if it's a protected Wi-Fi, right? And so um, th this one's kind of quick. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Aaron Warner, owns Pro Circular. Pro Circular is a company, a cyber-based uh, security company out of Iowa City, and we're going to post this out there. He has a uh, basically a free offering to do a cyber scan uh, of your network. Um, I would encourage you, once this is posted, um, I, would, I would tell you to, to go out and look and take advantage of it. Um, there's a link out there to, to follow and do it, uh, but I would, I would strongly encourage you to, to do that cyber scan uh, just because the, those attacks have gone through the roof over the last week. Um, I see a question, Katie, if I currently do not have a relationship with a banker, is it too late to establish one? You know, bankers are really friendly. It's never too late. Um, you know, I get we're doing this on Zoom, but right now I'm smiling and, and I'm here and ready to help you. Um, so sorry, being a little facetious. Uh, and I can hear all of you laughing too. And so my point is it's never too late. Um, you, you know, this is, this is a great opportunity uh, to reach out to a banker. Uh, we'd love to talk with you. Um, and the other bankers that I know in the industry, um, they're working from home. They'd love to talk to, to, to a new customer. We get to hear your story. We get to hear... Uh, how you started your company. We get to hear uh, what are the pain points and how we can help you in this moment and beyond, right? And so uh, that's a great question. We're, we're always ready in position to, to have new relationships. Uh, I'm going to pause. Mark, can I add a, a little follow-up to that question? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of banks are closed, uh, in the lobby at least. Mm -hmm. What yeah. is the best way to contact your banker if you need to establish that relationship? Yeah. Um, so going back to every website, right? If you're, you, if you're, if you're going to be actively seeking out uh, a new bank relationship, uh, you know, go onto their website, see if they've got uh, their hours posted, find the closest location, call that number for that location, ask them, Hey, I'm, I'm inquiring about having a bank relationship. Um, who can I speak with? And, and they'll direct you to uh, who, who the best person is for you, whether that's a home mortgage need or that's a business banker or that's personal banking needs. Um, Cause that's what we're doing here. Um, it is challenging, right? Uh, we are meeting with customers uh, face to face if, uh, if, it, if it makes sense. Um, I, and I say that if it makes sense, a huge asterisk uh, because um, we can do most email, phone call, uh, you know, a, a video conference uh, over the phone for this time being, because uh, it is important to, to, you know, have distance. And so, uh, in this time, uh, my hope is that's how banks are, are addressing those, th that process. 
Next bullet, uh, new programs. You know, over the last, uh, again, week and a half, all the conversation has been, you know, what's the SBA going to do? What's the Iowa Economic Development going to do? What's the government going to do? Right. So, um, again, back to my point about, you know, in the pre previous stimulus process, there was uh, no Twitter and, and information didn't travel in, you know, two seconds. Now, um, whether it's good or bad, it, it is. It's happening. And so, um, what I would tell you, just like the first version of uh, maybe a smartphone that you had, uh, it was probably a little clunky, right? And so, what I would tell you is, is, is proceed with caution in learning more about each of those programs whether it be with the SBA, the Iowa Economic Development. If you go to those sites, they have a link for the COVID response. Uh, walk through, look at the applications, see if this fits, if it makes sense. And then I'll go back to my you know, second bullet that I had today was be patient. Um, it's going to be a process. Um, are, are you going to call and get on the phone right away? Yeah, pro probably not. You're going to be on hold. Many people are looking for, for assistance and they're trying to understand. So, I, I would encourage you to look at those, uh, kind of use the yellow light example, meaning proceed, but be, be cautious, uh, make sure it fits for your company. Next bullet, uh, identify what can be sourced locally and buy it locally as much as you can. Um, that, that's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to understand what can I get from people that are running other businesses in town? Can I buy it from them? Can I pause? Can I wait? Uh, I, I'd really focus in on that uh, of what can, what can be sourced locally. Uh, then my, my last bullet uh, before I kind of go back to a question for everyone is, is call your friends. Call your neighbors. Be present with your family. Um, and, 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 and last would be maybe even call your enemies. Um, uh, and I say enemies, maybe, maybe someone that you've had adversarial conversations with. Those people could be in your same industry. Now's a great time to, to, to talk with folks because guards are a little down. Um, you can have real conversations with people. You can engage and ask them, talk about best practices. Learn from other people. Learn from mistakes. Um, because people need connection. Um, we, we don't have office interruptions. Um, <laughs> last week, I have never worked from home. And last week on day two, day two of working from home, I started randomly FaceTiming people uh, because I just didn't have work interactions. And that was hilarious. Uh, and it worked. Um, it, because I'm just, I'm, I'm never going to have another experience like that again. Um, and, and so now's a good time to engage that. And so I, I encourage you, again, whether that Zoom meetings to go, Microsoft Teams, take advantage of the free options. Uh, I learned the hard way. I set up a call with Zoom. Uh, I have the three options, and after 40 minutes, if three or more people, the call dropped. So I had to call everybody again. So just uh, learn from people's mistakes. Uh, and then the last bullet is, I'm just going to, again, kind of close out with what's good today. Uh, think about what are the things that you're doing, but what's good today? Um, how are you looking at the things that have happened, how can you engage them uh, rather than still landing on, on that, the big negativity piece or stress uh, in the world. Um, it's, there's been a lot of change over the last three weeks. And, and I've been telling people, I just want to, I just want a normal day. And I finally pivoted on that and said, you know, I, I think I'm going to engage uh, people, friendships, relationships, um, and really kind of focus in on what I, what I do well and what can we do well for each other. So um, with that, those, those are my words for, for today. I'm just going to give a minute or so for any more questions that might be coming in. If you have any, please don't hesitate. Kenny, I see you got a question. What is the biggest piece of financial advice you can give to small business owners in this current climate? Hmm. This feels like a million dollar question. 
Um, it's a really long pause, but I mean, I, I, I would say in, in, a, in a time leading up to this, life was fast. We were all moving uh, in a really fast process. And I, I, would, I would encourage you to, now it feels like life is a little slower. And so what I would encourage you as a small business owner is I would, I would encourage you to, to lean into the slow pace, look at what's happened with your company since you started, take note of, of pros and cons in, in, from beginning to where you're at, and look at what do you want to do, whether or not, it's not about looking at the current issues, it's just in general, what do you want to do for the next three, four months? Um, and, and be realistic, right? Like what's, what's the things that you want to do, pros and cons of each of those? And look at, you know, it may even be, is there a pivot within your business that you need to do? Um, and it's not about, I want you to turn everything upside down and, and totally change your company, but it's, what are the things that I can do during this period that I can pivot, um, for this company continue to continue? Um, and some of these is, um, being patient, connecting with your banker to look at what are those changes? Um, so I would say, uh, you know, to shorten that, that question is, is be, uh, thoughtful, think about what, what has happened and think about what you can do going forward um, in this current uh, unique period of time. Any more questions from anybody? And even all that up, you know, even if um, it's not a question, you know, it's more about if there's anything that I haven't that I that I missed. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking at this this bullet list, and I I think it's it, it's pretty broad and covers a, a, a wide a wide array of topics. But if there's something that I missed um, that you want to ask. Oh, that's a good question from Katie. Another good question. So Katie add, added, going back to computer security, what are the ramifications when my information is hacked and my client's information is exposed? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, the, the ramifications, um, if your information is hacked, um, I'll just use an example of a business that I know that had this happen a year ago. It had nothing to do with the current environment, it just was in general. Um, their, their computer system was hacked. And for the entire year of 2019, um, they had to, both 2019 and then in 2018, they had to recreate all of their buildings. Um, and so uh, they, they had no way to send out invoices because they build by the hour. They had no way to send out uh, invoices for, for a majority of 2019. Um, uh, and so they had to recreate all of their GLs. Basically what happened is, is their uh, software, uh, they were hacked and uh, it was a ransomware and they had to pay X amount to get information back. Um, and so they, I think we're, I mean, I know we're over a year, but I think they finally have closed books on 18 and 19 um, and finally are running as, as business as usual. And that happened over a year ago. Um, and so when I think about what are the ramifications if my information is hacked and my client's information is exposed, um, you, you have a huge liability. Uh, one of the things you will want to look into is what is uh, your insurance? So 
Uh, this is another thing I uh, put on here is what's your business interruption insurance look like? Your continue of your uh, continuity insurance if you have. Uh, and then the last would be uh, cybersecurity uh, insurance that you have. Uh, what's covered? Um, so I would, I would uh, again, grab those policies, review with your insurance provider step by step what's covered, what's not covered, uh, and how do you cover it. Um, again, I'd, be, I, I'd live more on the proactive side uh, of, of when it comes to computer or security than, than the reactive side. The reactive side always comes with, with, a, with a cost, pretty heavy cost. I'll just, I'll just add, uh, I was in the banking world in a previous life, um, and one of my main priorities was to work on incident response plans. So I would just say your first call should always be to authorities if, you're, uh, if you have been subjected to that. Your second call should be to a data breach specialist company, um, and your third should be to your bank to let them know that there may be some suspicious activity on its way in. Uh, I see Angela, you posed a question. Uh, how do small businesses decide to stay open or close temporarily? Well, I think the, the, I've never seen it before, but you know, we've been on order from governor and whatnot for specific industry types have to close, right? Uh, so that's, that's one, but then from a go forward basis, it, I think you have to start looking at, um, What's going to, what's incoming? Um, how do we, am I going to get any revenue? And, and what are the amount of bills that I have that are, that are, that are piling up? Um, I, I think my other caveat here is that we're still kind of unsure how long this will go, right? We're unsure how long places need to be closed and people need to have distance. Um, and so for me, you know, when I look at this question again, how do small businesses decide to stay open or close temporarily? Um, you know, I, I think the, the other piece of close temporarily is it right now is safety and health, right? I think, I think you have to kind of weigh, weigh the, the options with that. Uh, and then from there, I think you have to look at um, the vi viability of, this, of, of the company. Meaning, again, what's going to be incoming is this... Uh, even if we're going to be closed for only two more weeks, um, are things going to come back to normal? And how long, if my projection is I'm only going to be running at 50% capacity, can 50% capacity really um, make the business be net neutral or make a dollar? Um, and if not, I think those are the things you have to start looking at is, is, is at what percent capacity am I going to operate? And if I'm operating at 50%, what does that look like from the, from the incoming revenue uh, that I would even have to operate? Um, and then from there, I would, I would again, um, talk to your banker, depending upon if you've got, um, you know, a loan with an institution, uh, start talking about what, what are your options, right, of, of, of going through the process um, of closing. Um, yeah. That's such a... It feels like a huge question um, to be expansive. Yeah, yeah. Probably could be uh, an hour long conversation just on that. Just give a little bit longer for any, any more questions coming in. Is there anything you can think about that I've missed um, along the way? Whether you want to ask a question or uh, whether you're self active maybe I can address it for you. So it looks like we do have one more question in the chat. Oh, there we go. Okay. Do you, so, Kevin, I see your question is, do you know if unemployment is open yet for non-W2 workers? I don't know that answer. Um, you're going to hear me uh, clicking here. Let me see if I can buzz someone on this. Um, 
Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know that answer yet. I would also encourage you to, I, I know I already said this, and I will say it once more after this in closing statements, but uh, we do have a COVID-19 resource page on our website, and we are constantly updating that with all the new information that we're getting from around the web. So if you can uh, have that open at all times and keep hitting F5 to refresh it, there are quite a few governmental resources, um, small business, nonprofit resources, and a bunch of general and miscellaneous resources from all around the web. And again, once more, uh, Mark did mention a cybersecurity resource a little earlier. I am going to, uh, we're gonna send out a, a short survey to the email list for participants after this. We will include a link to that and a few short questions about your experience here and um, any follow-up questions you might have. So. Thanks so much for everybody uh, joining in and uh, being asked to, to be on this. Um, I wish you all um, safety and success um, in, in, in all that we can process and work together with this. So uh, again, thanks so much for all the business um, and what it does for our community. Absolutely. To uh, circle back to Mark's earlier point, we are earlier point. Excuse me. We are all learning new routines, new skills, new tools. This is a this is a brand new experience for all of us. So I think I just want to reiterate that we are all a part of the small business community, and we are all here to help each other. We want to be the most expansive resource that we can be for everyone. So any follow-up questions you have, any questions, concerns, comments that you have, please reach out to us in whatever capacity is easiest for you. Um, we have a lot more webinars that we're putting out in the weeks to come. We have one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching opportunities and new educational classes popping up to, we kind of talked earlier about the necessity uh, of, of pivoting for everybody, including us. So we're, we're putting together some new educational opportunities. Please stay tuned on social media and our website for all of those opportunities in the future. Um, once more, we are the collective voice of the community. So all of the interaction we can have is helpful for us and hopefully for you. Um, I wanna thank Katie at the Women's Business Center for coordinating a whole bunch of these webinars and making sure, and Lisa for making sure that we have uh, wonderful volunteers like Mark. Thank you to Mark and all of our great volunteers this week for helping out. Uh, I know everybody is extremely busy at this time. So we, we greatly appreciate all of the time that, that our volunteers are giving us and for everyone attending these. Um, I, I don't know that I have a whole lot else unless Mark, you have any follow-up comments? No, uh, I'm going to, uh, is it okay if I just put my email on here? If, if people, just, pardon me, I'm just thinking about Kevin here and trying to get yeah. that answer. Uh, so I'll just say email me any other questions. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, thank you again, everyone for showing up, for participating. Uh, please check back early and often to see the, uh, the other upcoming webinars and educational opportunities that we have. Thank you so much.